All right, guys, so we are moving on to chapter five. When we left off in chapter four, Esther had accepted the challenge of approaching the king. But we all know that that's a dangerous move because if you ain't summoned, you ain't coming. But anyways, let's keep it moving to see what happens in chapter five because now it's time for Esther to approach the king. All right, let's get into chapter five. On the third day, Esther dressed in her royal clothing and stood in the inner courtyard of the palace facing it. So look, she said, I'm going to get dressed up and I'm going to do the thing. All right. The king was sitting on his royal throne in the royal courtroom facing its entrance. As soon as the king saw Queen Esther standing in the courtyard, she gained favor in his eyes. The king extended the gold scepter in his hand toward Esther, and she approached and touched the tip of the scepter. Y'all, could you just imagine you're so scared to approach something or someone in life, and as soon as you walk up to it, the door just opened for you. Boom. She gained favor just like that. Just like that. He saw her. Golden scepter. She touched the tip and she's in. So let's go ahead and read on to see what happens. Verse three. What is it, Queen Esther? The king asked her. Whatever you want, even to half the kingdom will be given to you. Lord have mercy. A Ahasuerus love him some Esther, okay? He said, Esther, what you want? I'll even give you half of my kingdom. Tell me what you want. Whatever you want, you got it, all right? She said, if it pleases the king, Esther replied, May the king and Haman come today to the banquet I have prepared for them. So she said, all right, I want you and your boy Haman to come to a little dinner I've put together for you. All right. Verse five. The king said, hurry and get Haman so we can do as Esther has requested. So the king and Haman went to the banquet Esther had prepared. While drinking the wine, the king asked Esther, whatever you want, whatever you ask, excuse me, will be given to you. Whatever you want. Even to half the kingdom will be done. So this is his second time saying it. They had dinner. He feeling good. They said after he drank the wine, he's like, Esther, whatever you want, even if you want half of the kingdom, it's yours. So talk up. Esther answered, this is my petition and my request. If I have found favor in the eyes of the king and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and perform my request, may the king and Haman come to the banquet. I will prepare for them. Tomorrow I will do what the king has asked. So she's basically like, look, I got another dinner for y'all tomorrow. Show up tomorrow and then we're going to talk about it, okay? I need to ease y'all into this request because it's not really an easy one. So just show up tomorrow. And we'll talk a little bit about it tomorrow. Y'all know y'all really want something from somebody, but you don't want to ask right out the gate. So you're just like, hey, how you doing? All right, I'm going to ask him next time I see him. But anyways, let's continue reading to see what happens. All right, so we're continuing on with verse 9. That day, Haman left full of joy and in good spirits. But when Haman saw Mordecai at the king's gate and Mordecai didn't rise or tremble in fear of his presence... Haman was filled with rage towards Mordecai. Lord have mercy. The man done left from his meal. He was feeling good. And he saw Mordecai was like, ugh, why you won't bow to me? So Haman was filled with rage towards Mordecai. Yet Haman controlled himself and went home. He said, you know what? You know what? You know what? That dinner was good. I'm going to leave you alone. I'm going to leave you alone. All right. So it says he sent for his friends and his wife Zeresh to join him. Then Haman described for them his glorious wealth and his many sons. He told them all how the king had honored him and promoted him in rank over the other officials and the royal staff. What's more, Haman added, Queen Esther invited no one but me to join the king at the banquet she had prepared. I am invited again tomorrow to join her with the king. Still, none of this satisfies me since I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate all the time. So he got with his wife and he was just like, you know, man, uh, you know, look at all what I got. I was promoted and ranked in the kingdom. I'm the king's top dog. You know, I'm doing good. And Queen Esther invited us to a dinner. Like, look at me. But it's not good enough because every time I see this dude Mordecai, he just don't, he don't respect me. He doesn't deal with me. And that makes me angry. So let's continue to read on and see what happens in verse 14. His wife Zeresh and all his friends told him, have them build a gallows 75 feet tall. 
Ask the king in the morning to hang Mordecai on it. Then go to the banquet with the king and enjoy yourself. The advice pleased Haman, so he had the gallows constructed. Sometimes it's not a good idea to listen to your wife and your friends. I'm just kidding. But in this case, Zeresh, his wife, and his friends were like, you know what? Here's the smartest plan. Build a gallow. What we're going to do is in the morning, you're going to go to the king, be like, hey, yo, can I hang that little, you know, that dude, Mordecai, at the city gate? Let me just go ahead and hang him. And then he was like, then I'm going to go celebrate at the second banquet tomorrow with Queen Esther again because, you know, that joint be having me feeling good. So now I'm going to actually have a reason to celebrate, okay? <laughs> so that is the end of chapter five. And I'm just going to go ahead and do my next video so we can jump into chapter six because this is getting a little too juicy, like... I know they ain't really going to kill Mordecai, right? Come on back for chapter six and you'll find out.